RAVEN! Hi, welcome to Stark Raven Beer Reviews. How are you guys doing? Guess what I got? Queen of the Mist. Queen of the Mist. Now, you may remember we did Queen of the Mint. And that was cool. That uh, chocolate chip, not chocolate chip, oh god, uh, Thin Mint cookie beer. In that was amazing. This is Queen of the Mist. This is a uh, whiskey and wine barrel aged plum sour. Now, I have a feeling it's going to taste like Plum Conundrum from uh, Artisan, I think? I don't remember. I haven't seen Plum Conundrum in a long time. If anyone knows where I can score that, I want it. I need it. So just tell me where to get it, because I, I, I love Plum Conundrum. It's really good. Now, uh, Queen of the Mist is uh, the first ever, ooh, the first ever barrel-aged fruit sour at Martin House. She's been gone for a few years, but they decided to bring her back. Oh, so this is a throwback. Nice. You know who also had the throwback? Archon. Archon. Yeah. Oh my god, I got two more. Uh, well, I guess I have four more, because there's two in each one. I got more Archon. I'm so happy about that. So happy about that. I cannot. Oh, I'm saving them for a very special day. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, Queen of the Mist was originally a 5.2 geese. Ooh. Nice. And then uh, in this version, they upped it to 10.5. It aged half of the batch in whiskey barrels and the other half in wine barrels for seven months. And then they mix it. That sounds amazing already. Wow. So they aged half of the batch in whiskey barrels, the other half in wine barrels. And then they went, you know what we need? Marry them into the can. That's exciting. I like that idea. This is uh, another really gorgeous can that they do. Look at her. It's so cool. She got the plums. That's nice. Can you read that? 10.5. 100% unblended. OG of 17.6. IBU of... 11 so it's not going to be bitter it better not it says it's a plum sour and i highly doubt plums can be bitter they're nothing but sour i've never had a bad plum i love plums plums are really good uh the original queen was a first barrel okay so this is seven months aged okay cool brewed on june 14th Nice. And then I guess it was canned on 1-4-2024. Nice. It's actually been in my fridge for about three weeks now. Uh, just labeled as a malt beverage with natural flavor. But this art is immaculate as always. Every single can of Martin House has an amazing label on it. All right, I don't need to hype myself up even more. Let's get this pour going. And crack. Ooh. Wow, yeah, that was just like a drip. Already taste the tartness of it. That is definitely plum and very whiny, very whiny smell. Like, um, uh, oh God, almost like a plum sake. Oh, wow. Hmm. Interesting. Uh... Oh, look at that color. Oh, what oh, you didn't know. Oh, oh, wow, look at that.
It's a gorgeous color. Pinkish, reddish. Man. When they age plums, it turns into prunes, right? I think it's prunes that they turn into. Because grapes turn into raisins. And bananas turn into chips. I love banana chips. Apple chips are good too, but I prefer the banana chips. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Pouring this whole can in here. That is a sour. That is a plum sour. Oh, baby. It kind of reminds me of the, um, not in flavor, but in like the style, the smell, and like the blend of um, the uh, electric jellyfish, the uh, pineapple sour, uh, the uh, pineapple barrel aged sour. God, I loved that. That was good. Very winey as well. That was more like a Moscato than anything. But a pineapple Moscato. It's actually really good. I liked it. Um, wasn't one of my favorites, but this one is, in my personal opinion, is better. Oh. You don't get too much of the... Uh, the whiskey barrel you, you get a bit of it not much of it you get a bit of it but more that whiny comes through and I feel like that's just because it's plum and plum is naturally just very tart a very very finicky fruit Oof. I love myself a good plum sake too. So maybe I'm a little partial to it, but. I'm not even tasting it, I'm just drinking them. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take a real taste. Yeah, just at the very end, do you get that whiskey barrel? Most of it is like the wine aging that you taste. Again, because the plum is such a tart flavor. Um, you don't really get that much bitterness at all. Because that sour, really, that sour tartness overwhelms everything. You do get a little bit of that whiskey barrel tingle. But it's mainly a very whiny beer. An extremely well done whiny beer. Um, super tart. Super sour. Also very, also very sour on the up and up. Ooh. Yeah, more whiny on the up and up as well. Oh, wow. <sighs> this is actually... This is up there for me. This is up there for me. I'm, uh... Kind of still foggy. I like that. Man, look at that color. Very rich color. Very bright red plum. <laughs> it's colored plum. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm being dumb. Pinkish, reddish. Ugh. Just smell the plum. 
you smell the barrels. But that plum is super overwhelming. That's just the natural flavor of the plum. Mm. You don't even notice that it's a 10.5. I mean, eventually you will. But uh, not, on, not on the kickoff. Overall, really well done. I really like this. This is remarkably smooth for a sour. Um, if you're into that. <sighs> wow. Very enjoyable. Um, I'll give it like an eight. Eight-ish. Uh, more than an eight. Not lower than an eight. So, eh, 8.2. 8.2. Oh. Well. Ah. It's delish. It's really good. And I'm ranting and raving about this. Well, it's a really cool box art. Right? real tart yeah they actually have that poster up on their website too so if you want to score that they got the website just martinhousebrewing.com or something like that I should probably link them or something like that I don't know I've been doing a lot of that not not bad um very good personal opinion it's an 8.2 in my book uh, if it ever comes out again, I'm definitely grabbing it. It does remind me of Plum Conundrum. Oh, by the way, I already grabbed another one because I knew that I love Plum. So, yeah. I got two more of these. I gave one to my brother. He loved it as well because he's also a big fan of the Plum Conundrum. There's a bunch of concerts that I got planned. Oh, God. Oh, schedule. Uh, just went to Crosses. I uploaded that already. Um... Circle Jerks and uh, Windrose is coming to town. Well, Windrose is coming to Austin. The Bled is the next night. The Bled. 25 years. Uh, no, is it 20 years? Uh, Pass the Flask tour or something like that? Uh, hold on. I'm looking at the board right now. Then we got the Chaos and Carnage tour coming to San Antonio. So I'm doing that. And then the next night is Attila. And I'm doing that. I have to do that. I have to go to Attila. And then guess what? The next week, not even, like three days later, is Worry Club in Austin. But, but I don't know what's going on with this year, but I've, I've already... I've already got my ticket to every one of those shows. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be crazy, man. Dude, I've never seen uh, the Descendants, so that's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I've seen the Circle Jerks once or twice. I've never seen Windrose because they are an Italian dwarf band. They're dwarves. Uh, the Blood, I've loved the Blood. Ugh, old school hardcore kid. My bad. Not straight edge. I was never straight edge. I cannot say that. Never was straight edge. Um, Attila is Attila. Chaos and Carnage is Cattle Decap headlining with a bunch of really awesome bands. Oh my god, I totally forgot. I'm on Earth and Cannibal Corpse are coming to town as well. Holy crap. I'm going to be rowing. Wow. I need to get those. Oh, um, I got sidetracked. Anyway, you guys have an excellent, excellent march. Remember, um, I don't remember. I forgot. My bad. But 
Until next time. Drink responsibly. And, um, you know, be cool. Salute.